it's Miss Greg from Riggs Road Elementary. Today we are going to be exploring two of my favorite things, science and art. We are going to be learning some facts about bugs and we are going to be using our artist eyes and looking for simple shapes and learning how to draw a somewhat realistic stink bug. So first let's talk about what realism is. Um, realism is trying to draw something as real as possible. The easiest way to do this is to look at it, look at the simple shapes, Try and draw what you see, not what you think you see. So before we get started on our drawing, let's let's explore the scientific facts I like to share. Um, so here's a cool thing I didn't know if you knew. Do you know that all bugs are insects, but not all insects are bugs? What? What does that mean? Well, here's what's kind of interesting. The word bug refers to a specific type of insect that has a mouth that is shaped for piercing. It has compound eyes and has wings that fold onto themselves. Um, when I say piercing, we're thinking about bugs like aphids that eat leaves. They can pierce into the plant. So, cool fact. Again, all bugs are insects, but not all insects are bugs. So, how are we going to begin on the drawing part? Well, let's talk about what we will need. One of the first things you're going to need to do is decide what kind of bug you want to draw. I decided on this awesome stink bug. So I went and researched a little bit and found a picture I like and I printed it out with my printer. You also can just find one in a magazine or look at one on your iPad. You don't have to print it out. Then you're going to need a piece of white paper, a pencil so you can draw light till you get it right, some crayons that match the colors you might see in your bug. Because remember we talked about using our artist eyes to investigate. And then I have a pen for outlining. So to start with I'm going to investigate taking a close look using my artist eyes to look at the colors I see in my bug picture and the shapes. If I notice the colors, I see greens and grays and browns and a little bit of yellow. Um, might even see a tiny bit of orange in there. But now to draw it, I really have to use my artist eyes and investigate the shapes I see. So I'm gonna start by tracing over the shapes that I see in my bug picture. As I'm looking at the head, and I'm gently tracing over the picture, I see that it's kind of this shape. It almost looks like it's a rectangle that flares out. Then the next part of the body almost looks like a rounded diamond shape. And I notice there's also a transition line from one part to the next. As I get to the main part of the body, it almost looks like it is all it is a rounded triangle. So I'm going to go down and I'm rounding it off. And then I think it's almost like a shield shape. And then inside I notice that there's another kind of interesting rounded looking triangle. And then my eyes are on the outside here, those compound eyes. And that gives me the basic shapes to look at so I can start drawing my bug. Now, once I have, I've investigated the shapes, and again, you don't have to trace over the shapes. You can simply look at them, but I think this is a nice, easy way for especially my younger preschool friends to start to see those simple shapes using your, your artist eyes, and it makes it a little more literal. So once you do that, I like to take this drawing and sit it so I can see it, and then start drawing what I think I see. So now, once I've got my kind of plan in place. I'm going to try the best I can because we're, we're kind of trying to do it realistic using my pencil to draw light till I get it right, drawing those basic shapes, kind of making sure that it's not it doesn't have to be perfect, but I do want to find those same shapes that I saw in my bug before. You might notice that as I try to kind of define some of the shapes a little bit more that I like to kind of go down, go press down a little bit harder when I think I've got the shape I want a little bit. I want to I sometimes make my lines show up a little bit darker. You do it any way you want. I go in here and put those eyes kind of in the same place I see them. They're kind of at the bottom of the head, which I find kind of interesting. Now here's something cool that I learned about stink bugs. When, oh look, well, I'm looking at finding where the legs go in the picture that I'm using on this side. 
the leg comes out from this second shape right here and it folds down and around and it goes from big to smaller and then you can only see part of that other leg that kind of folds out and down and when I say fold that's where you're looking for that bend in the leg not only do you look for the shapes you also look for the direction of the shapes the directions of the line the back leg is here now in the picture that I'm using you don't see all of the legs you can see part of a leg over here and one of the things that we talked about is if we're drawing from observation trying to make it as realistic as possible then we have to draw what we see not what we think we're gonna see so if I don't see all those legs I can't draw all those legs now this is not perfect it's not as detailed as my photograph but I think I did a pretty good job finding the shapes now, I'm going to go ahead and start coloring mine and adding some other details, and I'll show you the finished product in a minute. Okay, so here's my almost finished product. I'll probably keep working on a little bit. So when you start thinking about combining art and science, it's kind of a fun way to work because scient both scientists and artists have something in common. Both scientists and artists observe and investigate. Two of my favorite things to do I'm going to continue to work on my bug, trying to get some of those little details. I'm going to finish layering my crayons so I can get those subtle colors I see as I use my artist eyes to look at my photograph. Um, later, I'm hoping to go out and actually go on a bug hunt in my yard and see what kind of bugs I can see. I'm sure I'll find more insects than bugs. But have a wonderful day, and I can't wait to see your drawings.